The brooding presence of the Lincoln B-2, the last of the Second World War bombers. In the 1970s, this plane was the focus for an elaborate and highly successful hoax. But the prank had a bizarre twist. Nearly 20 years ago, a team of engineers arrived at Cosford Aerospace Museum to carry out restoration on the bomber, number RF-398. Before completing their work, they were told the plane was to be transferred to a new museum opening in Manchester. The star of the, the museum should always remain there. And when we found out she was on the uh, movement roll to go to Manchester, we were literally horrified. We wanted 398 to stay at Cosford. Yeah, all right. The engineering team came up with the plan to prevent the bomber being transferred. Right, what are we going to call it then? Don't know. What about uh, Pete the Poltergeist? How often does it come around? Once a week? Once a day? What? Well, I think he's here now. I can feel him. <laughs> we actually invented uh, a ghost on the aircraft, and the more people that came to see the aircraft at Cosford, the more chance the aircraft actually had at staying here. Hello. Hello. I'm Carol Hardy. I'm from the Gazette. I spoke to Jim about the plane. Oh, that's right. Hello. What's been happening then? Well, I wouldn't believe it's been extraordinary. Once the, the local newspaper got in on the scene, we then had local radio. Uh, the joke as we saw it actually got out of control. Hey, Jim. What? You never guess what's happened. The local vicar's been on the phone. He's only offered to exorcise the place. Oh, we can't get rid of Pete now. Oh, no. I just signed him up for the union. <laughs> It was about 1980 or 1981 where we were informed that the Lincoln would be staying at Cosford. And as such, our task with the funny ghost was completed. The, the hooked in seats because there was no need. We had saved the aircraft. Today, the plane remains at Cosford. Of course, we've discovered now that the so-called hauntings were a hoax, but there is something we can't account for. The plane has become the centre of a new mystery. For nine years, paranormal researcher Ivan Spensley has been investigating a series of unexpectedly strange noises in the bomber. I decided to do some sound recording, so I placed a microphone near the radio operator's position and set the machine running, and the hangar was evacuated. Ivan returned to the hangar and played back the tape. He was staggered by what he heard. This is his actual recording from the empty plane in the deserted hangar. The first recordings I made here, I didn't know whether it was the sound of the hangar changing as, as the heat of the day left the building. I really wasn't sure, and I didn't know what to make of them. What I needed to do was do some more recording and also observe the, the natural ambience of the hangar. During his many visits to Cosford, Ivan has always meticulously ensured that nothing can contaminate his recordings. I seal all the outer doors with a strip of paper which I sign and if that paper's broken then I know somebody has gained entry. But since I've been doing it, I've never found any broken seals. To ensure the sounds aren't caused by faulty equipment, Ivan uses several different recorders and microphones. When the time came to publicise his findings, he invited Radio 4 producer Gwyn Richards to join him for an all-night vigil on board. It was about half past midnight, and we'd been sitting there for some time. I looked down to the rear gunner's compartment, and I thought I saw a pinprick of light. And I nudged Ivan and said, can you see what I can see? And uh, he said, yes. And uh, this tiny pinprick of light by this time seemed to have been getting nearer and it was moving slightly from one side to the other. And we looked at each other and uh, we thought, well, we did see it. After making a radio program about his experiences on board the plane, Gwyn received a sackful of letters. I mean, there is no explanation, really. Uh, but one letter only at the end gave me something which I thought was possible. It said that when the crew was on night flying, they used to reverse the little concave reflector in their torches and cover the bulb with them so that only a tiny pinprick of light was emitted from the torch in order to save the pilot's night vision. And that seems to me to be something which uh, approximates what I saw. 
But what about the noises? Ivan and Gwyn made further recordings on that occasion. I didn't expect to hear anything. And then suddenly on the tape was this incredible bang. I said, my God, play that again. And he pulled it back and played it again. Well, this is absolutely ridiculous. I just don't believe it, but it's there. Also on the tape was a sound that Ivan's recorders had not picked up before. This is the actual sound. Could the tape simply have picked up radio signals from atmospheric interference? I wanted those sounds verified by somebody who might know what, what caused them. Which was the worst part, landing or takeoff? <laughs> from my point of view, landing. <laughs> Ivan contacted the former 398 crew, among them pilot Phil Pritchett and navigator Gary Lewis. We climbed aboard and took up our positions. I was a pilot, so I took the captain's seat. Gary was up in the nose in the navigator's seat. And we went through all the drills that we have to do before we start flying. The noises we heard on the tape they, they certainly sounded like the normal noises that we get on an aeroplane, but somewhat modified. The noises on the tape resembled the clicks made by the switches during the cockpit drills. As for the whistling sound, Gary has his own theory. Eventually we worked out that it was a navigation aid called Consul. This surprised us because, the, as far as we knew, the navigation had been out of service for about 25 or 30 years. I thought it was very strange to get these noises in the middle of the night, hangar doors locked, nobody on the aeroplane, just tapes recording. Very strange indeed. The last Consul navigation unit was decommissioned in 1956. Thinking about it since then, I, I still can't find any logical explanation just defeats me completely. But could the recording simply be the sound of the hangar contracting as it cools down at night? The roof of the hangar creaking and that kind of thing. It's an easily distinguishable sound. It can't be mixed up with anything else. So what did the original hoaxers make of the strange noises Ivan has recorded? There are noises which may need further investigation. But there is probably a logical um, answer to those noises. But what that is, I don't know. I've listened very carefully to the noises I've recorded on that plane. I've tried to find natural causes for those noises. After nine years, I haven't been able to do so. But Ivan does know of one theory linked to the plane's history. The story on record here at Cosford is that RF 398 was flown by Master Pilot Hiller on its final flight. It said that he liked the plane so much that he would haunt it when he died. The strange thing is that Hiller was taken off Lincoln bombers and transferred to a Dove aircraft which crashed not too far away from Cosford and he was killed. The other thing is that part of that crashed aircraft was brought back and housed at Cosford. When we tried to trace the operational history of the bomber, we found gaps in some of the plane's official records. One explanation, it's believed to have flown on secret missions. Altogether, it seems there are more questions than answers about RF-398. Good night.